Hey, James. Um, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hey. Um, so how about this, everybody? I know you've, you've showed up for um, writing questions, book three, whatever. Um, I really appreciate that. I have scheduled time to talk about the RPG with James. We're going to talk about the world. You're going to like find out stuff about the world. You're also going to see what I value about storytelling. And we're going to talk about the upcoming podcast. I also have a cool reveal that I think I've told James. Did I tell? I get to learn new secrets. I'm going to be so excited. James always, he knows so many secrets about the world. But also, uh, you know, I'm going to reveal it here. We haven't listed it as an official stretch goal yet, but the McElroys have agreed, like, if we hit a certain dollar amount, the McElroys will come in and help us kick the tires on our new, uh, on the new version, the revision of, um, you know, of, of this role-playing system that we're developing. Um which personally, I'm super excited about because I love playing with the McElroys and they're a delight. Um, so yeah, all your favorites, Teresa McElroy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, I, when I reached out, so much fun. when I reached out to them, I was kind of like, "Hey," and the only thing that stopped me is like, "Boy, if I get the four and then there's two of us, that's a lot of." But I kind of went like, I'm "Like, hey, I really like, I really like all your partners." Is there a way for me to invite them to a thing and you know, have it not be weird? Like, uh, Pat, I don't see why we can't do both. I, I feel like we should be able to do both. I would love to see uh, uh, everyone cut loose in, in the world. I mean, I would love that too. I, I, I will probably. Uh, oh, uh, uh, thank you, Aaron. Uh, Aaron said you were a little, you were a little quiet, but that's fine. I can control that on my end. Oh, that could be on the move? All right. No, that's oh. fine. I, I uh, Generally, my desktop is turned down a little bit less. Also, I've been good about keeping my mic close up here. So, um, um, uh, wow. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you for stomping on in. Um, stomping on in and making a bunch of those donations. Uh, and... Um, and here's the question. Did role-playing in my world inform book three at all? It's informed the whole thing. I mean, I used to run scenarios. The Cathay was developed because I built it for a game that I was running. Um, that's the other reason that I'm excited to do this with James because going off and playing in the world and building things for the world sort of reignites my joy for the act of creation and it rekindles the sense of play that I used to feel creating this world and that's it's been it's been weird having to do it as a day job you know yeah yeah i i i recently finished up writing uh one of my books and i like it, it's a game it's like full of game design type stuff and i love doing game design uh as kind of a fun thing to do but doing it for a publisher on a deadline and whatnot boy howdy was i looking at it very differently in that process which is one of the reasons that i'm excited that, that we're doing this because it really gives us an opportunity to reframe and recenter why it's fun uh to do all this stuff and why it's not so much a job it's uh oh and actually i should do i just I assume that everybody knows who oh, these yeah. cool people are. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself or should I? Uh, yeah, I, I can introduce myself. Uh, we'll, we'll see how I do. You can you can judge me on this one. Okay. Um, I am James D'Amato. You might recognize me from the One Shot Podcast Network uh, that I run. Uh, we are a network uh, that produces shows about tabletop role-playing games. Uh, I have two shows. I have One Shot, where we tour different role-playing systems doing self-contained one-shot episodes. If you are a fan of the King Killer Chronicles, uh, we recently played a very, very early play test of the game that we're about to talk about uh, for that show um it ran for nine episodes it was really cool it's the longest series we've ever done for one shot uh but it was so much fun pat was involved if you want to know 
you know, interesting things about Tamarant that you haven't gotten to see yet, you can see some stuff there. Um, my other show is called Campaign Skyjacks. It is in a fantasy world of my own creation. Uh, it is about uh, sky pirates who accidentally uh, the, their captain died and they have raised his body as a zombie uh, to pretend that he is still alive so the crew doesn't turn on them and throw them off the ship. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy it. I'll, I'll say this just as a, as a yes and. Um, uh, everybody... I've played a lot of games. I've played with Ack Inc. I've played with Critical Role. Played with a bunch of folks. The games that I've played with James have been, if not my favorite, then absolutely among my favorite. See, that sounds like I'm equivocating. I have said, I have said in the past, and it's been the truth, that like when I played Kids on Bikes with you, it changed the way that I thought about gaming. Um, and it was one of the best storytelling experiences ever. Everybody listening to one shot listening to campaign uh has changed the way that i've thought about storytelling in games straight up uh it's it's it, there's such a joy i love me adventure zone but i will say this i love um uh skyjacks as much like at straight up as much like and also like I keep up on Skyjacks way more. Like, take, take from that what you will. Uh, not that I don't love those good, good McElboys, but right now I'm all about the Skyjacks. Um, so That is high praise yeah. as somebody who keeps up with Adventure Zone uh, religiously. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm also going to... Oh, I meant to sort of circle back and say, hey, I know a lot of you showed up for the, the writing Q&A and book three Q&A. How about this? I mean, see, and a lot of you are like, but but wait, I still want to throw out my questions. I'll say, you can keep doing that in the chat, but you're going to experience a lot of disappointment. Right now, again, we've sort of moved past that time slot. And now I, we're, we're going to talk about uh, this role-playing system. We're still going to talk about my world. Uh, we can field questions on that regard. But how about this? When we hit $200,000 in the fundraiser, I will schedule another writing Q&A and book three Q&A that we will advertise and people can show up for then. That's going to uh, happen pretty soon, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, how about how about this? If we how about this? I'm going to throw it down the gauntlet. Do it if you do it uh by if you do it by the end of tonight, I'll do it for a solid hour and a half next time so we have more time. Ooh. Okay? Bring it. Folks, Bring it. Do it. I want. I want to hear. Um, and so, and then I will announce it, and I will schedule it, and we'll let people know ahead of time so you can show up and be a part of it. Um, and then, um, you know, and and but also maybe follow the channel if you want to make sure you get a heads up, um, because that will not be part of a huge other live stream. I'll do it during my normal. Like I'll do it some other time, but uh, yeah. <sighs> Okay, so, uh, uh, so yeah, like there, you want a stretch goal? There's your stretch goal, um, and that's a, stretch goal. that's a you know, I'm happy to happy to do it. It's yeah, I will admit it's kind of emotionally exhausting talking about book three, because even if there's not pointed acrimony from the people asking questions, I do f still feel like persistent guilt that I have not gotten you the thing that I wish I could give you and that you desperately want yet. But uh, sorry about that, but let's let's move on. We're gonna talk about uh, games now. Um, um, so, James. Uh, Pat, it's been- Where did you, where, where did you want to start for this? Where because did we want to last... start? Yeah. Um, I, I could uh, sort of walk people through, do a last time on this process uh, so that people uh, understand kind of where we are uh, in our game design process. That's that's a, a, that's an okay. Allow me. Can, can I can I hmm. prepare? Can I propose? Because like before we, we, we made a system. And again, if they want to hear that system, uh, we've also have we've done other talks about what we were looking for. Um, and what we wanted to achieve, oh, here we go. 
recommendation for the 2000k stretch goal we'll take questions prior um oh yeah let's lower the chat cooldown please mods uh bust that chat cooldown to 40 seconds um also uh xanatos's recommendation is a good one uh everyone if we hit 2000k by the end of the night um you will be able to submit questions ahead of time and uh and if like maybe we'll even have some sort of way of i mean if we get obviously a lot of duplicate questions those will be ones that i answer first okay um but again like you know uh we're, this is for charity so come in donate make the world a better place win cool shit also you'll get another stream like this if you want it <sighs> uh um here's my pitch james what if because we we know what we've done mm -hmm. how about you know and and we know some of what we've done what we like and kind of we want to keep but for the purposes of this discussion just because not everyone has come here with us how about we talk about and this is something that you've twigged me to so in terms of this it's like i learned this by watching you because i came in i'm like here's what i like in a game and you're like but what are you trying to accomplish in the game? What are what are your books about? You know, and I'm like, oh shit, that's a that's good because games that I've played that I've loved have the the harmony of mechanic and and tone, you know, and like uh, Yahtzee Kar uh, Karshaw on The Escapist constantly says he's like. Why are you trying to have a game where the person is tortured about whatever, but the only game mechanic is that you can fucking kill people all the time? Mm -hmm. um, I've heard the term ludonarrative design. Dissonance. Dissonance, yeah. Yes. And so, like, I love that. I realize I've been talking about it for 10 years. I didn't know there was a word for it. <laughs> so, so here, here's my thing. Let's talk about, and also we can include the chat, um, what do we think, what are the things that people love in the books that they're going to want to see in a game they're playing in the world or a podcast they're listening to in the world? And so let, if we talk about that a little bit, and then we could be like, well, that seems important, but it's it's actually an offshoot of this. Or like, ooh, that's, that was an exciting moment, but it's not everywhere. So I'll lead off um, because I think one of, the, one of the things that is very satisfying and that, that is a huge part of the story, and it's occurred to me only by thinking about this, is um, it's a lot of the joy is in is in learning. And so, and it's not just learning information, although that's a huge part of it. Um, a lot of it is both learning things and getting better at doing things. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, like I think having and and you know, and you and I have talked a lot about. We want the game to be simple to learn and easy to play, but also like sort of gritty enough that you can really kind of make it your own and have fun in the system. Yes. And so, you know, we've, you know, so how about that? I, I, the, the joy of learning and getting better at things, learning information and improving yourself and learning skills um, and improving your ability to do things, you know, and that I, I just want to leave that blank. I could be more specific, like becoming better at sympathy, becoming like learning more alchemy, but also like learning more about the world, learning another language, you know, all of these things, you know, like I feel like if we don't have a robust ability for somebody to say, hey, I'm I'm OK at sympathy but as my character lives their life, I want them to be like a journey towards being amazing, you know, or to being more. Um, what do you think about that? 
So, I mean, what we're describing here is an advancement system, which is something that, you know, is a hallmark of role-playing. It is a game mechanic that role-playing games kind of invented. Um, and I 100% agree. I, I think a lot of the action that we get to see in the books uh, centers around how both like, takes in information and takes advantage of information. Um, and making that a compelling thing to engage with is a unique challenge. I, I think in a lot of role-playing games, like when you introduce any universe from a book uh, to a role-playing format, there is the danger that kind of no matter what you are trying to do, that you turn what you're doing into Dungeons & Dragons. Right. Um, so, like, what we don't want is to put out a King Killer Chronicle role-playing game and then just be like, well, this is pretty much a game where you only really engage, engage with, like, the naming wars, uh, the shaping wars, because, like, that's the most like D&D &D it could be. Um, so, yeah, we want to center around personal character experiences uh, with this game and, and particularly find interesting ways and mechanical ways for players to feel like their characters are being clever and are getting rewarded for discovering things because that discovery is a big part of Kvothe's journey. Because we were talking about this maybe uh, linking up with a discussion of books, one question that I have to you since we're, we're talking about uh, the experience of learning and its importance in your world and stories in your world. Uh, the book uh, that you're, the, the book that is not book three, uh, that, that you have done some writing on, how important is learning in that book? What, what role does oh. learning play in that character's journey? And, because. And actually, thank you. You, you, <laughs> you just step very carefully. The truth is I have talked about it publicly before. So the book that James just mentioned that I okay. referenced briefly before. Also, everyone, again, one of the many, many reasons that I love James D'Amato is he is so considerate. Um, all of these people that, I, that I've gotten to, to hang out with and show you today, it is a consistent characteristic of these people that I love um that they are so careful and considerate uh but the book that uh uh that that james is referring to is the one that i in my head i think of is the tale of lanael young again um and it's the story that will be set long long before the current like the the the, the king killer trilogy it's it has a different name King Killer Chronicle. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but um, in that story, you know, it is, it's how, how much is learning a part of it? It's, it's all of it. It's all of it again. Apparently, I think this is, hmm, oh, I just learned a thing about myself that I already knew. I'm always, I'm, I'm the, I'm the Clark out of the, out of the mill, out of the Canterbury Tales. It's like, it's like gladly learn and gladly teach. Like I want to, I want to learn things, and I want to teach things, and those are the two great joys in life. Is, uh, and and it always seems to manifest in my book. I want people to go on a journey of discovery, and people to be curious and want to, and 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 you know and and be, and have experiences. So yeah, actually, uh, Laniel's story is all about leaving her comfort zone and 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 learning more about the world at large uh, as well as the reader being exposed to modeg which is a whole different kettle of fish culturally speaking and and here here we come to the prestige let's also look at lightning tree oh and uh uh slow regard of silent things okay because this is the canon of work that we have to draw on of these are different takes on Temerant, right. and uh, they're all sources uh, that people could draw on to want to do their own stories. Like I, I agree uh, from what you've described to me of the Lenny L. Young again story. It seems like 
it is a learning story, even though you have a character kind of established in a culture, she goes out and she learns new things. Um, the, uh, like, Quoth, uh, I imagine, learns things very different uh, than the character of uh, <laughs> Laniel. You know, the, uh, being all hopped up on gifted teen energy uh, <laughs> is very different than being an older woman. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, gifted teen energy is. I, I've never heard anything approaching that phrase before. I wish I could buy a bottle of gifted teen energy. Like <laughs> it would be like, are, it would be like Lucy's items. diamond vial in the Narnia Chronicles. It's like, this was extracted from, from a thousand teens and it's like a single drop. And now you can, I, Oh, I finally can answer my email again. Um, Oh my Christ. <sighs> so like uh if if we look at slow regard, um I do think learning takes place kind of in slow regard in a very uh specific kind of esoteric way. Um you know, a, a lot of it is Ari understanding her environment and it trying to accommodate her environment. Um with lightning tree, lightning tree is interesting but i do think in the end it is kind of a quest for knowledge um bast just goes about it in a different way so all all of this says that like oh yeah, the, my god you're right yeah you're super yeah. right and although it honestly it's been a while since i i read that one that's not something i can often say it's like i wrote lightning tree man oh man i wrote lightning tree in like two weeks um you know, like I can do it, folks. It's just like I kind of need to have my head okay. My head ain't been okay a lot lately. But you're right. It's he's he's absolutely Bast is Bast is Bast is rearranging his entire environment so everyone brings him information, isn't he? Yes. 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 And what we want to think about in terms of designing a game system kind of around this dynamic of the world is how much time are we spending on specific instances of learning, how, how much attention is devoted to it, and how much dynamic action gets built around it. Something like Lightning Tree. Lightning Tree could either take an entire four-hour role-playing session of Bast trying to hunt down the bathing location of a specific person, or it could be a single, you know, role or mechanical resolution that's like, oh yeah, uh, though I, I want to get this piece of information and I accomplish getting that piece of information by having a relationship with every child in town who brings me like things in exchange for the chaos that I sow yep. throughout the community. Although I, I would like to throw it because of all the stuff that I've written, you know, I'm guessing and quick poll of the chat here, how much, uh, uh, like how many people here in the chat didn't know I wrote a story called the lightning tree? Uh, if you could be like, Oh, well, hold on. I just peeked in the chat. Apparently somebody, yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> somebody just donated like a, t a ton of money. Uh, thank you. <laughs> anonymous donor. Also that Ooh, donation is, guacamole. is, is matched. Um, uh, so that's double a ton of money coming into the everything. Uh, so good job. Um, oh, yeah. And so a lot of people are like, yep, didn't know you did that story. Uh, but I do want to say what James just said is is appropriate for kind of like, does Bast like go watch a young woman like take a bath in a stream? Yes, but and and you can't take my word for it because I wrote it. James, is that as creepy as it sounds? It, it is for for context for people that don't. Uh, it is after Bast has has been viewed by this same person. This is kind of a uh, flirtation uh, between the the two of them. And when I say the two of them, I really mean Bast and pretty much everyone of marriageable age in uh, that particular town. Um, but yeah, it is uh, kind of a game that they're playing with one another. Cool. And, and I also, that was a bit of a spot check for me too, because honestly, I've learned a lot about sensitivity to diversity by like following James's work and having discussions with him 
and just like and sensitivity to diversity is only a narrow slice of it it's just sort of like maybe not contributing to the overall shittiness of society accidentally through promoting sexism and all of the other bad things uh james james i i use as a touchstone sometimes um so I, i'm glad that you read that in the way i also will say lightning tree if i had written that like 10 years before i did oh i would have fucked that up so bad like bass would have come off as the worst instead of i sort of built it in and i hope i didn't do it too subtly that he is like everyone is engaging in this sort of consensual yes somebody here says it's consensual bath watching where like this is this is a playful like thing that's happening among people who are all you know like if how about this i i did my best to make it not bad and creepy and promoting bad things you can be the judge yourself as to whether or not yeah, i accomplished and, that and I, I i think also as an audience you you are definitely within your right to condemn yep. uh bass yep. uh it's uh, it, it is he is a complicated character and uh regardless uh this is about exchange of information between bast and the town he is in yeah uh, it, it is very sort of classic fairy story of there are kids that present bast with problems and offerings and he is giving like kind of chaotic interactions with them empowering them to do some pretty wild things he he advises a child to feign an illness so that she can get a kitten oh my god i pretty, forgot about that yeah uh, <laughs> some pretty good stuff uh bast is like a, a clear fairy bastard in this uh to to the, the highest degree <laughs> But if we were to break that down in game terms, okay. you know, it's a decision of how much attention does the narrative want to play, uh, pay to a certain a thing like this. Uh, and we should also think about like what knowledge means to Quoth at different points in his journey, because essentially system wise, I think there are some things that, you know, some pieces of knowledge that are permanent. Uh, permanent like skills and pieces of knowledge that are on your sheet like you know sword fighting that's a thing both learns and will use and reuse time and time again throughout his adventures uh however uh things like uh the social hierarchy uh within uh oh gosh why can't i remember the name of the city the mayor's city uh oh Severin. Uh, Severin. Severin. within yeah. Severin. yeah uh, within se the social hierarchy within Severin and like relationships between different nobles, it's clear that Kvoth learns that at one point, but we see him learn that knowledge and we see him use that knowledge as kind of disposable. It's not something we need to write down and remember that Kvoth remembers forever. Um, so like the way we treat knowledge, I, I think a, a good dynamic system will create a separation between knowledge that is something we always need to keep in mind when we're thinking of our characters and uh skills that they have that they will use versus things that we can that become resources that we can acquire and then spend away yeah and i i, I like that thought because i remember once i was playing in a game and like knowing and, and here's just general something it took me ages to learn everyone if you like tabletop role playing or whatever um oh my lord okay we are at 199 ah! everyone this is uh everyone y'all we almost topped out the matching on day one yeah yeah um you know that's although uh, honestly i think our matching kicked in uh because some people found the fundraiser we had the page live a day early, a day or two early mm. so we could make teams and everything. And some people are just like, they're like, just like, you know what? I'm going to come in and donate even a little bit early. <laughs> and so a lot, some, some of the people, the money people already, uh, uh, donated, uh, you know, was early. So, uh, I think we actually have some of that initial hundred thousand dollars of matching money will last later than, uh, um, anyway. Um, so um, somebody was talking to me about 
uh, or talking to somebody else and they're like, well, what are your games really about? Or how do you like to run it? And a friend said, oh, they're like, and he goes, the difference is he goes in my game, the most dramatic choice is usually the best one. He goes, because I like to run a game that's pulpy, you know? So it's like, of course you leap from the, you know, from the tower onto the burning Zeppelin to have a sword fight with whoever, you know, whereas somebody who's doing a, a much more, uh, like gritty, realistic, like Joe Abercrombie sort of world or game. It's like, no, you better play real close to your chest and be real careful. And then maybe you survive with only a maiming injury. Like that's sort of the ethos of that game. Um, and so, but he said for Pat's game, it's always about, you need to know what's really going on so you can make good choices. And, and I was like, huh. And I'm like, oh, I suppose that is, I suppose that is kind of true, isn't it? Like, and, and there is also like, well, and, and I was just going to say, it's like, it's not just like, you need to do a bunch of research so then you can make the best rational choice because, but part of it is like, actually, uh, cause I'm like, there's fanciful stuff. What about the fairy bargains? And I'm like, Oh wait, to make a good fairy bargain, you would need to know like where to go and how to do that bargain. So you don't get caught out. Like you can go and make the fairy bargain. Like you can know half the story. And that half story is, if you want to, if, if you, you need to find a place where water and stone and fire and sky all come together, that is where you go to meet certain creatures. And it's like, find that place. And that is where, that is where things are thin and creatures like that are easily met. And so... Uh, here's here's a quiz for the chat. Uh, where's a place like that that you can find in in King Killer? Um, um, I don't know if I'm gonna tell you. Um, uh, like or maybe I will. Uh, but once you find and they're like, I solved the riddle. I can. I got them. I got. I, I'm going to this place. Cool. You learned a thing. You were clever. But what do you know about what do you know about these creatures? Have you done? Do you, do you know the truth about these creatures too? Because what do we learn about King Killer? What do we learn in King Killer? Being half clever means that you are all you know enough to do damage. You, you know enough to fuck yourself, like real, real good. If you weren't smart enough to find, uh, where is it? Hold on. Uh, oof. There are a lot of there are a lot of guesses. Uh, oh, oh, actually, these guesses are so good, everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I would not say any of these are wrong in my estimation. Uh, somebody here says the bridge doesn't have fire. Uh, stone bridge to Imri. Um, I will say the stone constructions in the world, not just the waystones, but like, and the old stone bridge is one hundred percent. That is that is a very important place, and that comes out more in book three. By the way, um, um. Uh, and actually, you're right. Somebody said Elodin already told us that. And it's like stone, sky, water. Where's the fire? It's like, hmm, that's a good question. But actually, it, it does have fire, just so you know. Um, yeah, I think I think, I think think Elodin even asked both that. Uh, and both did not answer it yet. So Yeah, there's the under thing. Uh, I want to see other. Somebody is like a volcano island. Absolutely. Um, that's a little mad science for the, 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 the ethos of my world, but I would say somewhere, oh, no, actually, hold on. I, I did that in a game. It was like, it was up in the mountain, so it's close to the sky. There's a little river, but also there were, it was like effectively a hot spring. So like there's fire, mm. stone, whatever. That was a place too. So, yep. Okay. I was unfairly critical of volcano island i actually did that myself um uh drac yeah okay okay see every, there we go everyone's doing great there but like being half being 
you can't screw up if you're not a little bit clever because you could never know enough to to get into a situation where you could make real trouble. So now again, I nothing is more frustrating in my opinion than a game where it's it's kind of like bad improv where or like honestly bad teaching for that matter where you say where the teacher is like blah 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 question mark and you're like they're thinking of one particular answer and if I don't say the exact right thing I'm going to be wrong and so that's what I want to avoid um that's what I want to avoid in the game as well like not one path but like many ways to be clever many ways to reward cleverness but also there are consequences to incomplete or uninformed cleverness ooh uninformed cleverness is the problem yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, so this is uh, for people who who haven't uh followed along or, or listened to the podcast yet like there are frameworks that that we're already thinking about like but what the the central thing of the play test thing that we've done so far is pat and i are both kind of in agreement that there wasn't a good core mechanic in place yet um and especially not one that interacted with this dynamic very well uh there were things that i was more compelled by originally in the design uh one thing that i want for a king killer game is for dramatic things to be possible and always on the table and for characters to bring their traits and abilities to the forefront and essentially uh, be able to do things without being denied those things by randomness. Uh, so I didn't focus on a core mechanic um, and I borrowed an old John Harper trick. John Harper designed Blades in the Dark and so many other wonderful role-playing games. He says, when you don't have a mechanic yet for a thing that you're designing, just replace it with a coin flip and that'll do for now. And so that's what we did. Um, and then Pat uh, showed me, shared with me a board game that I have, have come to love and I know Pat and his boys love, and that is Quacks of Quinlingburg. Uh, I am very excited about this game and the sort of mechanical contribution it's made to our process. Uh, for those that don't know, Quacks of Quenlingburg is a uh, game about uh, potion makers uh, that has a push your luck system in it where you draw pieces from a bag. Um, randomly from a bag and that like fills up a track that's in your potion pot uh but misfortunate things can happen to you uh if you draw the wrong thing from your bag at the wrong time um i was thinking like i was trying to think through like there are things in the game that i like uh one of the things to give people on the stream an idea of what we're doing uh I had set up a system, kind of a resource management system, where we use uh, Commonwealth, or not Commonwealth, uh, we use Shieldish Currency uh, to express like a character's ab abilities to do things. And you could actually spend from your resources pool to accomplish certain feats. There's a character that we put together in playtesting who is a sword fighter, and one of her abilities was she could spend a uh, drab from her uh, pool of, I think it was uh, her finesse pool to embarrass or no, it was humiliate her opponent during a fight. That uh, doesn't mean she automatically wins the fight. Uh, all it means is she does something to humiliate her opponent during the fight. Right. Um, and, you know, we can think of a lot of like story advantages and disadvantages uh, to doing something like that. Uh, if she were fighting someone like Day Dan, humiliating him during the middle of a fight, might shut him down. Um, you know, he got in a couple scraps, and when he made a misstep, he kind of read the situation and backed away from that. If she were to do that against an opponent like Ambrose, uh, that could create a huge problem for her uh, later on down the road. Uh, so I wanted, you know, to give characters abilities that were cool, exciting, and interesting, and kind of they always had access to. So separate from the randomization mechanic, which at the time was coin flipping, uh, a char this character always had the ability, if she got in a fight, she could humiliate an opponent, no worries whatsoever. Um, 
with the structure of uh, this Quacks of Quedlingburg thing, I want uh, people drawing randomly from a bag, and I want them putting things and taking things out of the bag to affect what their pool is to draw from. Um, essentially, uh, the idea is if you learn something or if you have relevant skills, that can increase your likelihood of drawing something good from a bag. And if you maybe don't anticipate things or you're attempting something difficult, that will increase your likelihood of drawing things that you don't want to see. You can also involve complicated relationship things and drop in representations of people's relationships and whatnot and make a pretty satisfying like draw situation that represents what I think is the complex tapestry of what is going into everything when we encounter action in the King Killer Chronicle. Like I, I think when uh, Kvoth succeeds or fails at something, I think there are a dozen reasons uh, in each direction why whatever happened happened. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. Um, you know, and and honestly, I'm, I'm curious the, the the quacks mechanism, which again I love that game, I, I and and we've talked about potential mechanisms. I'm almost I, I'm torn. I'm torn between. Um, I'm torn between wanting to. Like, get a system, and refine, 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 refine. You know, because that's that's what I tend to do. That's that's my revision process. Um, you know, now admittedly, sometimes a revision is me like <laughs> fucking flipping the table over and being like, <laughs> like, it doesn't, nothing works, you know, like, and, and I'm like, I guess I'm going to cut this entire character. I guess I'm moving this entire subplot somewhere else later in the book. I guess maybe I'm just cutting it all out because there's not room for everything before he leaves on an adventure, you know, and and so like there's big changes so like i will admit part of part of me wants to like we have this the, the sort of the quacks mechanic you know it, it, part of me is like what if we 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 did that one system and what if we sort of set that down and then it's like, so now we got this bag mechanic and we got this thing. What if we, it's like, okay, let's try this, you know? And it's like, maybe, and, and again, I've got to say what I love is, um, you know, I, and again, I've never played in it, but I love the narrative utility of the Genesis system. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and also like the die rolling, the, the versatility and the economy of roll. Where, for those of you that don't know, the Genesis system um, is, um, you know, uh, effectively, if I say, I, I, I want to do a charity. I want to, I want to raise uh, $100,000 in our first day. And they're like, cool. Then that's, that's uh, charisma, you know, and also, do you have, uh, do you have, uh, technical knowledge i'm like n no technical knowledge actually i've got one pip of technical knowledge two pips of charisma it's like okay you're rolling three dice how hard is it to raise a hundred thousand dollars in your first day of your charity and they go well that's daunting that's a dip that's a four purple dice difficulty and i'm like oh i'm only rolling three dice and so effectively you roll you roll the challenge and your skills at the same time and they can cancel each other out. And I love it because, the because it's like after playing like storyteller, which I got to say, I played the hell out of vampire back in the day, but it's like, I'm going to attack and you roll and you count it up and they're like, cool, I'm going to dodge and they roll and you count it up. And it's like, okay, I, I still hit you. It's like, cool. I soak. And then you roll your soak to see if the damage from when you get hit it's like cool i soak or shadow run it's just like fuck we made like eight rolls in this one action and i'm so tired and i just i mean when i was 14 great i would roll dice all day i don't give a shit but these days i want to get some story i, I have three hours and i, I need to i i 
please let me end this combat. Please let me do this. So I love that. But, and again, just to sort of flesh this out, you can say like, well, do you have any bonuses you can add to it? And it's like, well, uh, you have James D'Amato who gets to come on your stream and he's fancy and everyone likes him. So it's like, there's a, there's a blue die. You get an extra like bonus die to your role. And it's like, um, you know, you get, you know, Aaron, Aaron's pretty good at managing this community management. Okay. There's two blue die, you know, it's like, okay. So now like, maybe I've got a chance of doing this great thing. So I love that. I, I, I love just, and then you make a role and it's all resolved. And then you build the story out of that role. Yes. So like, I, I, I will admit, and, and part of me is what I want to do is like, can we, whoopsie, whoop, hold on. Uh, hold on one second, Aaron, uh, you're, you're showing up weird because, uh, is everything okay? Hold on. Uh, did the stream crash? Or can you hear me, Aaron? Okay, Aaron, you've muted yourself. Uh, I oh. I can hear. Okay, hold on for one second. I'm gonna I'm, sh here. I'm gonna shift this. Uh, oh, okay. So now the stream can see you. All right, are we up? Yeah, I'm, I I can't believe it's TV's James D'Amato. I'm so <laughs> excited. Hey, James. Hey, hey. Uh, gentle friends, I I I come bearing good news. Humble oh, we hit it. Was we hit so... it. We hit it. Yeah, we're at, at two oh seven. Yeah, but but that's not even the best part. Humble Bundle was so impressed with what we've been able to do today. They've given us another hundred thousand dollars in matching funds. So there's no reason to stop. <laughs> not stopping for anything. We're just going. Keep shoveling coal in that engine, baby. We're doing. <laughs> oh man, the Humble Bundle, Congrats. folks. Uh, wow. Uh, that's wow. Um. Uh, so, so, I mean, thank you. Thank you for coming in. And if you've messaged me elsewhere, I'm sorry I didn't see that anywhere else. Uh, and if you interrupt, if you jumped I, I in. I sent you a skywriting pilot, yeah. Uh, if you if you tried to tell me somewhere else, sorry I wasn't paying attention. That's great news. Now, now Pat, <laughs> where do you meet people that are so impressed with how quickly you can spend their money that they give you more money to spend? Because i got to meet some of these people. <laughs> you know, let's, let's fold this back in where effectively – in in the one of the other things that I love about the the Genesis system is uh, oh uh, uh, okay yeah I'll I'll talk to you in a bit Aaron um uh now let me flip this back I'm almost getting good at this um so so yeah just uh, just to clarify and and also I'm gonna say this out loud. To, say, to make sure that James or uh, that uh, that Aaron can bounce it back in the chat confirming that I've understood that news are you saying that humble bundle has been kind of watching which is flattering and that they're like oh good job using up that hundred thousand dollars of money you did it so good here's another hundred thousand so is that is that it is uh so we got like a whole nother hundred thousand. So like that means up to four hundred thousand in the fundraiser is matched. I realize I'm kind of up talking, and I apologize for that. Humble Bundle is matching for another hundred k. They're very happy about it. They're giving us a hundred. So yeah, that's what's really going on. Um. Uh. So yay, everyone. That means don't worry if you're just tuning in. You're like, oh, I mat. I missed the matching money. Uh, actually, you haven't. Fresh matching money, fresh meat. Everyone jump in, stomp around. But you've already lived with the fear of having missed it. So now that you know what can happen, <laughs> you must give now so that it doesn't happen to you. Uh, well, no. See, everybody, you're saying like, oh, it's up to 300K. No, because the the matching money is being added in real time. So, like, if you were to say, if you were a freakazoid and you were like, ha ha, 100,000 matching money, and you just dropped that on the fundraiser, which, by the way, that'd be great. I'd, I'd love it. Then suddenly our fundraiser would go up to 400 because all that matching money would immediately be, be coming in. That's a feature, that's a feature uh, State Classy has. So, 
so yeah, that means it's going to be matching all the way up to 400k as you're watching it tick up. So, so uh, yay us! And I, also, uh, we were talking about Genesis. Oh, what it is yes. is is one of the the features of it that is so diverse is you can roll, um, you can roll this dice and you can get like I have two successes and two threats. And so like you do succeed on what you're doing. However, something dangerous or bad happens. Like there, ooh, suddenly it didn't go quite the way you want. Or you can fail and get an advantage, you know? And it's like, oh, you missed the person, but what good thing comes of it, you know? Um, and then, but there's that other piece where if you are really good at a thing, you can roll that triumph. And so like, I think like when you get that good roll and it's like, you know, it's not merely success. It's a above and beyond that stretches beyond your original goal, which is, for example, instead of just getting people to use up all this matching money, apparently they come in and they give you, you more matching money. <laughs> matching money. Yeah. So th that is something that uh, to peel back the curtain a little bit on campaign skyjacks, we use the Genesis system. And the things that I find convenient about it are the same things that Pat does. Uh, I love that Genesis allows me as the game master to assess every role. And I can emotionally sort of in that moment decide how difficult a thing should be. I can look at each situation and I can go, oh yeah it should be really easy for uh Kvothe to you know talk his way into a library or actually it, it should be really easy for Kvothe to see that somebody is trying to trick him that ambrose uh does not wish him well and means him harm uh but we've just he's just been whipped and he's drugged so that is actually going to be a hard roll instead of what should have been an average roll uh, it's it's a super, super convenient mechanic. It uh, puts uh, more things in the game master's court. And again, it resolves everything as a single role. The other thing is Genesis produces non-binary results, which yes. means you learn pass fail, but you also learn extra things uh, that add uh, unanticipated story elements onto what you're doing. Uh, which really helps you build a more dynamic tapestry of action uh, within your narrative uh, for whatever you're rolling for. That is something that I'm trying to preserve into this system. Uh, but, you know, like, again, there are a lot of things we need to throw some spaghetti against yeah. the wall. Um, I, I do think we should probably, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do early on was try different role-playing systems uh, just put king killer in different role playing systems and see what we liked and see what we didn't i definitely think we need to play uh a king killer thing in genesis uh to see how that rolls out and i even have an idea of how we could incorporate the 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 sort of quacks mechanic into a, a like a, a version of the genesis like res resolution thing um and so how about this i think and to because we're we're getting to the end of the time, and I really appreciate you being willing to go a little late, you know, start a little late and come in a little late. Um. Um. Uh, oh, uh, Vi Hart has come in and says, as a mathematician, uh, I must relate that because the amazing humble bundle extra hundred thousand dollars came in at two o eight, will probably be matched all the way up to past. 4:15. You know what? What we're going to do is we'll we'll look we'll look at the data tomorrow when we can <laughs> and but but here's the other thing. I'm going to right now I'm going to assume up to 400 because I would hate for people who donated in the interim, like who were in the middle of putting in their donation mm -hmm. to be like, "Oh, you're kidding me. I I was in the brief window where my donation wasn't matched." <laughs> Like that would be a bad feeling. So, my my anticipation will be, given that we've we got word from them about that, um, I would not want anyone who came in in the middle to feel sad, like they had not been part of the cool thing that we're doing. But we'll we'll confirm that for tomorrow. Um, so, um, 
so real real quickly, James. Oh, also, hello, Raiders. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're doing a charity talk. Actually, we're doing a charity, but also a talk. And they're sometimes the same talk. Um, levels. Levels or like point-based uh, escalation of character. I would say for King Killer, I would do point based or that's, that's me something too. tiny incrementals because uh, Kvoth, who you know knows how to sword fight, is not a full level higher than Kvoth, who doesn't, but he is certainly improved. Uh, so I, I, I think that's a critical thing to reflect in whatever we're doing. Cool. That's my gut too. Um, and I, I ever since I went point based, it's hard to ever go back to the like feeling good about level based systems. Which is not to say like in a video game, I love me that level. Like give me that level, mm -hmm. give me that, give me that. Like I want, I want that. Also, I'm sorry for making that noise. Um, the, um, and actually, as soon as you started doing it, James, I'm realizing that writing parts of this gaming book. The examples are going to be really easy because you can be like, you know, normally Quoth, you know, can Quoth talk his way through a situation? Absolutely. You know, um, is he generally pretty observant? You know, well, mm, yeah, actually, I mean, that's very hit or miss. So you can be like, he's trying to get into the archives, even though technically, according to the regulations, he shouldn't. And so... Like in that, I might, and so I could see you building that dice pool. It's like mm -hmm. he's charismatic. It's like this is against the rules. Like, a dude who hates him already. Dude who hates him already. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, there's either that like gets bumped. Oh, like Ambrose is an antagonist. He gets escalated to a red die. Um, maybe he gets like a black die because he is drugged, a black die because he is whipped. Um, and, you know, like, so, and then you roll it and you're like, ha ha, he succeeds. Uh, he succeeds with a disadvantage and a despair. Yep. And the despair is that like, boy, you got, boy, you, you got were, man. <laughs> you were the huckleberry here, man. That And it's like, and he sicked Lauren on you and you're fucked. You're not ever getting into this library. You did get in. That's what you were aiming for. The despair is like, oh no, it broke so bad. And then the the two the two threats are the fact that in addition to all that, he took your fucking money and he doesn't even need it, and you needed it so much. That's how that role plays out. And here, like, I I, I want to peel back the curtain farther, Pat. When we first started talking about. Uh, King Killer as a role playing game, I reread your books and broke down all of the critical moments in oh. what I thought. Like, if I was GMing, this is how I would construct this role. And, you know, in this moment here, I think Kvoth is using an ability. So, how would I reflect that in the mechanics? Oh. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, one thing that I think is essential, absolutely critical to a system that we make is. Any reasonable gamer would look at the pool that was constructed while Kvothe is drugged out of his mind, trying <laughs> desperately to get in the library, look at those dice and go, well, I know my character is an idiot, but I'm not. Uh, so I don't want to make this roll. We need to give the players an incentive. Oh, you want, you want to, even if the results from this roll are disastrous. Yeah. You want that. Yeah, so, you're right. We absolutely need that, the some sort of mechanism. Like I know in, I can't remember what system it is, but you. Oh, it's uh, is it Monster Cypher. of the Week? Uh, no, Monster, no, Monster of the Week. Monster of the Week. Wherever, whenever you f you fail, you have a straight up failure. You get an experience point. Yes. And yes. so, like that, in some ways, is it's sort of it, that's a little meta, where it's like. Where it's like, ooh, you, you, boy, you took it in the teeth there, but you know, you know, and you're gonna deal with absolutely negative consequences to this, this big old big failure, but, um, but you do get to spend 
you do to get a cookie to spend for later. And so that eases the sting of this thing for the player. Uh, but you're right. That's almost like like a compensation as opposed to an incentive. You're right. I want to incentivize realistic but potentially unwise plays. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I want as a player to look at doing things where my character is at – a massive disadvantage, uh, but that would put them in kind of like an iconically bad spot with the same excitement I look at a situation where my character is at advantage. Um, a lot of role-playing systems have sort of like trained up because they evolved from war games. So they had this like sort of adversarial nature to the GM player relationship. Yeah. Like they've trained in the player, like I am trying to mitigate risks and maximize rewards. But that is really not how action plays out in the King Killer Chronicle. Uh, Chronicler does not minimize risks and maximize reward. Chronicler, you know, goes to the ass end of nowhere so that he can get the story that he wants and continually pokes a bear in order to do that. <laughs> Yeah. And so and we want to we want to empower and encourage people to play characters like that because we don't want a game that's just D and D in Temerant. What we want is people to be able to play these stories that you wrote. Yeah. Or stories that feel like that. And and I will I will admit, and I gotta give props to to an old friend who helped me along this road because I've always um I've always felt um you know a i've always felt that gamers typically go through sort of a journey like a lot of and like mine has been like oh i'm 12 years old and you're playing D D, and so you want to be as powerful as possible and have all the coolest shit and that's natural you know uh, there's a reason they call it adolescent power fantasy um uh and that's that is cool. They're like, why do people think that's cool? It's for the you know. It's because it's it is cool. It's fun. But then, um, you know, I'm like, ooh. But now I want to play something different. And then it's like, ooh, I want to play something challenging or like new. I've never played it before. But I remember, uh, and my friend uh, was Pat. I met about in grad school when I was running games set in my world just to to play. Uh, which back in the back in the day, I played Hero System, which is again one of the most beautifully articulate systems that I've ever played. I played it almost exclusively for almost twenty years. Um, it's very very mathy though, and and I, I just it's it, the math would stand in the way of the narrative we're looking to achieve. But um, what I remember this friend, and I'm like, okay, you're all from the university. You're out to make your fortune in the world. I need one of you to be like a noble's fourth son. And other than that, uh, like who wants to do what? And somebody's like, ooh, uh, I'll be the I'll be the noble's fourth son. Like, you know, I got 50 bucks and a kick in the ass and that's it. Um, and but he's like, but also I want to be a namer. And I'm like, cool, we can work that out. I've got rules for that. And somebody else is like, ooh, I want to do this. I think it uh, like, and he was an engineer. He's like, he's like, I'm down on the sympathy. I want to, I want to do sympathy. I'm like, cool. That's you. And then my friend is like, he's like, I want to be a hunchback with a club foot. And his name is Claude. And I'm like, he's an alchemist, you know? And I'm like, we're, we're, we're having the birth of heroic characters. Why are you like, why are you trying to play someone that it will be very hard to be? A, a a burgeoning hero and you know all all you know discussions of diversity or representation aside um you know because i was like i was like don't you see what i'm trying to do here this is a a all of you like a coming of age story or whatever and i remember and there was such joy and it was the smartest thing i ever did was like fight my own instincts and say okay cool fine do whatever you want and claude was in there claude wanted to be a hero and claude you know they were facing down the mayor and then he pulled off his mask and there's a shadowy terrifying thing underneath and he's like Brah! and then and then jumps like and he's like 
and like leaves the decaying dead body of the mayor and and apparates through the wall you know onto the roof to just like gets through it's like is discorporates and claude's like i'm a hero and like ju- like smashes through the window like jumps through is like i'm gonna have a rooftop daring midnight chase and i'm like i'm like make your dex roll man uh, you built this character to, to not be good at this. To not be good at this. And I'm like, make your dex roll. And he didn't make his dex roll. And dude, like, skids out and falls off the roof. And and and, and the fact that I remember this moment. And it's been 15 years. You know? It's been 20 years. As one of my fondest moments running for a character... And I will say, I, I've played games or run games for a lot of characters that I love. Um, uh, and uh, and I love Claude. I love Claude like as much as any character that I've ever run a game for. Uh, yeah, Claude was amazing. I, I loved I, I loved Claude. I rooted for Claude. Claude constantly, his reach was his, was beyond his grasp. Is that the phrase? He strove and failed and was brave and failed and tried and failed. And I'm like, I love this game. I love this person. So yeah, let's find... I, but also part of it will be the way we like present the game and present the rules. It's like, hey, joy in failure. Can we find yeah. joy in boy, man, if we can find joy in failure, can we teach this to everyone? Because if only I could be happy at failing at so many things like I do, right? Yeah, I I mean, that'll definitely be something that we have to teach. Like, we have to teach, like, the attitude of the system. Uh, There is a brilliant John Harper line in Blades in the Dark uh, where he's trying to convey to his audience, like, this is how this game is meant to be played. Blades in the Dark is a role-playing game about thieves uh, who operate gangs in a very gritty, terrible city. And he said, you should be playing your character like you stole them. Uh, You know. Oh my God, that's great. And that really sets up a thing in your mind because like John Harper imagines you will play through a character you will burn through a character the story will still be there but you are going to break this person down as they strive after a goal um and you know jason morningstar uh wrote in fiasco that these are characters with high ambition and poor impulse control (laughs) like all of that sort of frames you of like oh okay that's that's how this game expects to be played and you know we, we're going to be kind of negotiating with an audience like this is kind of hey you enjoyed uh both stories you you enjoy like his heroic narrative this is kind of the narrative meat that's making that work and part of it is he fucks up a lot <laughs> he's got a lot of great things going for him but he makes big mistakes all the time it would almost i can think i think this is a bad way to represent this somebody here in the chat i think they nailed it you know with the the in 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 world language people are like somebody uh fuzzy fuzzy raspberries uh says you know you're trying to play a beautiful game play a beautiful game yes yes and i'm like yes. you know what that's that kind of nails it and again i think the bad mechanism would be something like at the end of the session it's like you know, it's like, there's a box. It's like, did you fuck up? You know, and if you didn't tick that box, then like, maybe, maybe you don't, you're not sort of rewarded as much, but that's, that's mecha, that's not the right way to do it. Where it's like, you know, I, 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 I don't want to make it purely transactional, but also if you get what you grade for, so if it's not in some way rewarded, you're right, incentivized, I want to encourage some behavior, not punish the lack of behavior. So one of the ideas, like with a quacks uh, sort of centered system. Actually, can, can, oh. can I pause briefly? I uh, yes. uh, Fair warning. I just peaked at the time. I've kept you longer than uh, uh, than you've committed to stay. I'm fine with this because I the, the, the interstitial times are kind of 
they're they're like and and i i specifically told aaron when he was scheduling this i said i said uh you know to please don't schedule anyone directly after james because i love talking to james and we'll <laughs> we'll just keep going so but if you are if you're busy if you got to go um i don't want to i am i am i am at your disposal oh. I, first of all i'm here for charity i'm here <laughs> I, I get to I get to finish this stream and and go well I did one good thing for the world tonight at least so, so. actually there's my segue man you're you're a good like <laughs> set them up James I'm gonna knock them down one good thing for the world today you say well hey everyone uh, if you haven't heard the pitch uh, not only uh, am I here to talk to like my good friend uh, James D'Amato James. I, I realize I'm just I'm I'm tangenting tangenting off of my tangent, uh, which is my brand. But I uh, uh, I just said my you know my friend James D'Amato, that's a thing. I over the over the last ten years I'm like what is friendship anyway? Because it used to be that I had like friends but they like they came over to your house and you lived in the same town and you always did things with each other and you were in the same comedy troupe and you know like you 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 and you were roommates and you were always in this this soup and so you were always there and then I left that world of college and which I lived in for like my entire adult life and then like suddenly all of my friends were scattered around and also a lot of them were professional people and I would see them at conventions and only rarely and so I, I I started to be like well I know this person I like them but like my, my little boy once said who wrote that book you read me and I said his name is Neil Gaiman and he goes do you know him and I'm like well you know I, I do a little bit and he goes are you friends and what he was actually trying to get to the point where he wanted to ask me to send him a message. And that message was, you sure know how to write a spooky story. Uh, but he asked me that question and I went, I, I don't think we're friends. I like him. Like we can message each other. We've hung out. And then it sent me into a spiral, which from which I have not entirely emerged. Like what is, what does being a friend mean? But I'm going to skip to the end. And I said, I actually hesitated a little bit when I was talking there. And then I, I, I kept moving forward and I said, my friend James D'Amato, that's not a thing I often feel comfortable saying these days because I never want to presume. And I certainly don't want to presume here either. But like, like, you're my friend, James. Yeah, Pat, we're friends, bud. That feels real good to say. Um yeah. Oh no, it's at the point in the stream where I start to cry, everybody. Um, uh, and, and I haven't even talked about feeding hungry children. Everyone, I'm not just here talking with my good, close, personal friend, James D'Amato. Uh, I am here, we are here, to make the world a better place. How, do you ask? The world is such a mess, I hear you shout from sitting in front of your computer uh in in quarantine because you're a responsible person everything sucks pat how could we possibly make it better i feel sad and helpless all the time wow i say now in my own voice how closely your inner monologue mirrors my own <laughs> um i'm so i'm so sorry you feel that way cuz i feel that way all the time and the truth is, there's a lot going on in the world that we cannot personally fix. All you can do is what you can do. There is a there is a self self necessitating true statement. So maybe you can't fix fascism. Maybe you can't fix all of racism. Maybe you can't like instantly snap your fingers and genie wish away uh, Donald Trump or the pandemic. You know. Um, there's there's my two first wishes before I set the genie free, James. I've already decided. <laughs> um, I fucking right into the cornfield with him, um, <laughs> and and but you know what you can do if you feel like you can't 
fix things and you wish you could. You want the world to be better, but you don't know how. I'd like to introduce you to an organization called Heifer International. And for 75 years, they have been making the world a better place for real all over. Uh, Heifer International was actually started by, uh, it was during, I don't know if I've ever told you this, James. I know we've talked about Heifer. It was actually started by a man who was a dairy farmer. Uh, and it was during the Great Depression. Pretty oh, wow. It's been a long, a it's, long time. It's, well, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm. Don't quote me on that, everyone. It's I'm, I'm <laughs> ten and a half hours into a, into the stream, but it was it was in a bad time in a bad place, and there was effectively a line of people. And because he's a dairy fine farmer, all of these children were lined up to get a cup of milk, and he was giving every one of these kids a cup of milk because, like, otherwise they wouldn't have food, and he was doing this to help. And then he said he had a revelation and he said, I realized that these kids didn't need a cup. They needed a cow. And so he started, and that's why it's called Heifer International because dude started with cows. Um, and he started trying to find ways to get people livestock so that they could have food security. Man, everyone, I've been searching for that phrase in my head. It's so pivotal to everything we do with Heifer food security, knowing where your food is coming from. It's something that if you live in a place where you can kind of watch a stream on a computer, you probably don't have to worry about food security in a lot of ways. Um, although increasingly, it is actually a problem here in the United States as well, uh, especially with some of the economic problems, especially with the pandemic. Um, but what Heifer does all over the world, including here in the U.S., is they help people um, achieve food security, economic independence, and self-reliance. And they do it a thousand different ways because they don't try to cookie cutter the solution. Uh, they don't assume that one size fits all. Heifer goes in, works with the community. They learn their culture. They learn about the ecosystem. And then, um, you know, maybe uh, some people come to them and say, hey, we want a bunch of sheep to eat those sheep. And it's like, mm, how about you raise sheep and you milk sheep and then you have wool and then you have industry and then you make money. But we'll, we'll, we'll help you. It's like, also, do you know how to care for sheep? And they're like, no, nope, we're just hungry. You know, and, and I'm <laughs> this is all a bullshit, fictional, whatever. But like they go in. And they help people understand. Uh, yep. Okay. I was right. 1944. Wow. Um, wow. Oh yeah. Heifer's been around forever. Forever. They are. They're. They're bona fide. Right. Um. They uh, have bones. <laughs> they guaranteed 100% everyone working at Heifer International possesses bones. Um. Uh. <laughs> uh. Uh, I lost the thread of that little story I was telling, which is great because it was a bad story. Uh, heifer goes in, gives a family a goat. Suddenly, that family every day has milk for everyone to drink. That's calcium. That's protein. It's calories. Um, also, a goat produces a gallon of milk a day, which no matter how much you like milk, you're not going to drink a gallon a day. It's extra so you can sell. That means you have a revenue stream. Suddenly, you have food security, source of income, also, the small business that you've been given, which feeds you every day, has a babies. Spoiler alert, goats do babies. Goats, everybody, goats, they fuck. And so these goats give birth to more goats, and then you have more goats that give more milk, and, and then everything gets better forever? That sounds silly to say, but it's actually how heifer works. Um... They give people chickens and then the chickens lay eggs and they teach them how to incubate the eggs and get more chickens. And then and then they have a lot of chickens that lay eggs and they eat eggs and they sell eggs and everything's better forever. Except it's better than that because Heifer also teaches those people to pass on the gift. It's a core part of what Heifer does. 
where they say, eventually you're going to be okay. And when that happens, you owe it to, to us, to yourself, to the world, to pass this gift on. So once this family becomes really self-reliant and they can eat all the time and things are better, they go to their neighbor and they're like, hey, what do you know about chickens? Hey, what do you know about goats? Let me show you how to make a pen out of the local materials because now I know how to do this. They spread knowledge, they educate each other, and there are parts, uh, uh, places in the world, uh, famously in Nepal, where an entire village of women get together every year and they they meet, they, there's another nearby town and they meet with those women and they teach those women how to take care of goats and how to build a pen and how to uh, plant crops that the goats will eat. And then there's a big deal and they all like, they put on their fanciest clothes and they take the baby goats and they go to this village and they give these, the, the, the new village, they give all these women their goats. And these women are like, this is it. Here's my goat. Actually, you don't give them a baby goat. What you do is you give them a pregnant goat or, or a mama goat who has just had babies. And that that's, I mean, spoiler alert, that's why goats give milk is because they have babies. Also, there's enough for the baby goats, too. You're not stealing like from the baby goats. that is a spoiler alert. Everything is a spoiler alert. Um, yeah, that, that's a book three thing. It'll, you'll get to it. <laughs> and so, but there are places in Nepal where there's a village that, like, it's the 10th generation of goats that have been gifted and then that community gets on its feet and then they gift to another village and then on and on and on through generations of goats. Um, it It is, here's, here's the phrase I use a lot. It's like an avalanche of good moving endlessly into the future. If you're like me and you like seeing patterns in the world, uh, as if, and by like, I mean, you cannot avoid but see patterns in the world because you're smarter than is entirely convenient. And so you look at the world and you're like, oh my God, fascism and racism and the pandemic and I've done the math and global warming and oh my God, we're fucked. It's getting worse and worse. Let me provide a different narrative for you because that's what I do. Imagine a world where food grew on trees and then you gave someone trees and then they plant more trees and and goats gave birth to goats and then people shared goats and people taught each other how to take care of goats and suddenly everyone has food because we all got along and we all shared and we all took care of each other and everything gets better forever until we all have more and more and everyone's healthy and happy oh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room for capitalism in this world <laughs> there, all right there there is carefully controlled and moderated healthy capitalism uh <laughs> or at least a sensible economy like one of the things that you, thanks again for the I don't think you meant it as a as a softball heifer goes and talks with farmers and they're like hey we noticed that you make chocolate uh would you like to sell it directly to people who will treat you better than fucking hershey's you know um and so they talk they have these farmers form collectives that increases their selling power and they team them up with people who want to make really high class art, like organic chocolate that's like ethical fair trade chocolate. And then suddenly the farmers like maybe get more farming techniques and they get good business hookups. And also they know how to unionize and collaborate. And, and so suddenly the farmers make more money and also with the more money goes into the community and Again, they do all of this shit everywhere. It's amazing. I, I haven't talked about the, the slimmest sliver of the pie of what makes heifer good. That's a weird thing I said just now. Uh, so that's what heifer does. World Builders is the charity that I run. I accidentally started. Over the years, we've raised more than $10 million for Heifer International, more than 14 for other causes too. If you come in and donate to this charity right now, this link that keeps getting thrown up here, for one, if you miss the news, we got um, matching money. We had some. We used it all first day. And now 
the Humble Bundle community was so impressed. They gave us more. I want to wow them by how fast we use this next 100,000, folks. I want to fucking blow them out of the water. I want to... I want them to say, we didn't know it could be done. That Those world builders, folks, they get the job done. So if you come in and you give money, you, the impact you will be having on the world is doubled. But wait, there's more. Also, we're giving away $100,000 worth of books and games and other cool geekery. Um, every 10 bucks you kick in is a new chance to win. And James, did you know Wormwood came in? Uh, oh, uh, Wormwood in previous years, they've given us like one of their big, beautiful, and you've seen, uh, my, my, uh, my prophecy table downstairs, the big, beautiful oh, one. Oh yes. In previous years, Wormwood has given us a, a gaming prophecy gaming table to give away. And we have, but I think you said once it's like, man, I'd love this, this table, but then all I would need is a castle to put it in. Um, because it's such a big, beautiful table, it would almost, it's like, oh no, I want it. What do I do? <laughs> but they just did their huge Kickstarter. Did you see their Kickstarter? This, I did. With the modular I tables? I watch everything they do like a hungry goblin. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, they did their huge modular table thing. This year, I'm like, hey, can I help you show off this awesome modular thing you do? And so they're giving us three tables. Um, and so, and like one of them is, it's like, we'll, we'll be showing them off. One of them is like the coffee table with the game vault, um, you know, black, black walnut, beautiful table, or it's $1,500 of store credit to make whatever you want using their modular design. It's like, mm -hmm. or how about a small dining room table with these woods or it's this much store credit for whatever you want to make using our modular design. And then there's the Papa Bear table, the biggest one. And it's like, how would you like? Here's all of this or this much store credit to make a big, beautiful table with whatever woods you want in whatever shape you want using our modular. So three chances to win a table that you get to make whatever you want. The table of your heart. Um, so if you live in a tiny place, make a tiny table. If you already have a lot of dark wood in your house, make it out of dark wood. If you love purple, they have a wood that's literally called Purple Heart and use that. So there's like so much stuff you can win. Every $10 gets you a chance. Books, games, so much cool stuff. Also double your money. Last but not least, if you come in and you donate... $20 is enough to give a family a flock of chickens. It will change that family's life forever. $30 gives honeybees, which would increase the production of a farm or garden plot by as much as 300%. $60 is fruit and nut trees, preventing soil erosion, providing shade, conserving water, um, and providing food diversity and cash crops. $120 is a goat. $250 is uh, clean water a uh, thousand dollars provides biogas stoves for an entire community um there is there's there's so much you can do they do so much with so little money if you come in with whatever you got and i understand a lot of you on hard times it's a it's a bad time in the world it's a scary time holidays are coming up i super get it but I will say, right now, we're getting matching money. So kicking in 20 bucks is really 40 bucks, double the good. Um, but here's the real thing. Here's why I keep doing this. Here's why I stick at it, even though it's a lot of work. If you come in, you put some money in, and I've been saying it a couple of times. I don't know if I've had any takers yet. If you come in and donate this money and what you know is that Heifer will take that and then children will wake up in the morning and they will drink milk before they go to school. Um, parents will go to sleep at night not scared at the thought of being unable to feed their children. Uh, people will drink clean water. Um, little girls get to go to school. 
Um, people get to do meaningful work that benefits their family and their community. You will know that you have helped do this. It's a hard time and it's easy to feel helpless and it's easy to feel hopeless. And if you need to not feel that like I do, doors open, come on in. And if you donate and you don't feel good, I will give you your money back. We're going to leave it in the fundraiser. I personally, Pat Rothfuss, will then, if you're like, man, I gave 120 bucks for a goat, like you said, and I thought it'd feel good, and then it didn't. Um, I'm like, that's cool. I said I'd do it. I'll do it. I'll give you your money back. No problem. Heifer will still get it. Guaranteed. Pat Rothfuss, feel good. Money back guarantee. Um, I'm really curious if anyone will take me up on it, but I, I, I've said it, so I'll do it. Um, so jump on in. I want to use up this matching money. Also, if you donate here on the team page, I'm giving away a, a bunch of stuff that is exclusive to this team page. Like a, a lot of the old currency. James, I found full sets of the old currency. I knew I had a couple, but it turns out I had I had enough to, like I put one in the lottery and even the old gold mark. Um, I've got some of the silver talents. Um, I found a bunch of stuff when I was digging through my 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 vault um so we're giving away original art handmade tax sets all bunch of stuff you'll see more of it later but if you donate here you're eligible uh for daily drawings every day um as well as all the stretch goals we unlock as well as this matching money the end come on in the charity's good come be awesome with us uh you 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 will feel the best you'll feel good uh the end i have no strong closer <laughs> thanks for sitting still for that james i talked way longer than i meant to uh you know no i i love i love hearing you go off on on heifer uh it's something you've probably pitched it a dozen times today but you mean it each time which is oh it's it's always, it's always <laughs> great to be around for that. it's sort of like you never get tired of talking about your kid uh although mm -hmm. heifer is not my kid i i love uh, it's, it's sort of like, oh, I know, I know a cool person. It's like, I never get tired of about talking about one shot. Like you guys are a source of joy in the world and you do good work. And I just want everyone to be in on your business and, and watch your cool stuff and, 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 and eat up that delicious everything that you make. And, and there was a question in the chat that oh, I wanted to address. Uh, they're asking if one shot has a team page. We do, yep. um, but in true ADHD fashion, I haven't written it up yet. Uh, Skyjacks comes out tomorrow, so it will be ready for tomorrow uh, for us to jump on. But we're we're planning some uh, pretty cool stuff uh, to to uh, do for for this year. I'm very excited about it. Uh, uh, Pat's already worked on a little bit of of the stuff that that we're doing for it, so. I'm jazzed about it, uh, but yes, that I'll have that up tomorrow. Just watch my social media uh, at One Shot RPG on Twitter, and I will tweet out the page when it's when it's ready. I will see. I will say, everybody, um, you know, James. James is a delight, and the the work that he does and the people he works with uh, are also delights. So, if you're looking for more good stuff, if if you insist on being on Twitter, try to try to mitigate that pain by by following you know following these people doing good beautiful things um oh everybody you're jumping in and it warms my my cold dark coal of a heart um uh thank you everyone for jumping in i i i feel bad that i'm not reading every name and making like blowing kisses to all of you um y'all are y'all are amazing oh no gray why are you still awake um uh okay sleep. um gray you need to be awake tomorrow when i'm sleeping my odin sleep <laughs> <laughs> okay um so um boy i boy i talked a mile there would uh, uh you've been keeping a better eye on the chat and you probably remember better what we were in the middle of we probably should only do like another another five whatever minutes, and then I I think I've got Nate next. 
So, so an innovation that I that I wanted to, to yeah, talk yeah, yeah. to you about. I was I was trying to think of like what is compelling risk reward. What is fun to watch people? Uh, the the idea that I have is essentially in Quacks of Quendlingburg, you have a bag um, that is is full of tokens. You don't know what's in it, but you do put things in, uh, and eventually, like it sort of smoke screens. Like you know, I ha I know I have so many good results in there, so many bad results in there. I thought it would be fun if there is like kind of a standard set of like, this is what uh, what you have in there when it's easy. This is what you have in there when it's difficult. Uh, and you've got gradients, sort of like uh, the Fantasy Flight Genesis gradients. Um, but what if players could choose to, instead of rolling, instead of drawing from the bag for certain things, to put something in the bag instead? What if you uh could be uh i'm trying to think of a good example of of Kvothe's behavior um what if you could say well instead of putting this to risk and, and drawing right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take two tokens uh two two bad tokens i'm going to put them in the bag and get a success that way instead we we did i remember chatting about this like conceptually in a couple of different ways with you what about this? Because I like the mechanism you have in Skyjacks where you allow people to, especially for magic, there, there's the mechanism of uh, you effectively have body magic, you know, mm -hmm. which is, but uh, like you can fire, you don't call it that. What it, it's, uh, um, you know, like you can, there there is tangible magic in the world you can burn, you know, like it's mm -hmm. fuel. You find... A magic crystal or a you know lucky rabbit's foot or or something like that and it's like it's it's a, a fuel for to like for a one-time magical boost mm -hmm. uh but the other thing was the concept of sacrifice yes and so i'm thinking kind of along the same lines as you but what if instead of because you know instead of like doing all of because and and here's what i'm, I'm curious and this is a, a version of this i'd love to try even if it's just like a quick you me and one other person trying oh, yeah. to trying to trying to do it instead of having all of it in the bag we have the dice and the bag is effectively your your willpower or your chutzpah or your moxie mm -hmm. or whatever the the undefinable like inner resources or in a meta way it's like um you know your your star power there was the game where you're everyone's movie stars and you're making a movie together and so if you die you're like well i'm calling my agent you spend your star power to reverse like your character's death um what if you would have the dice similar to the genesis system but then if you're like Boy, I want to upgrade this. Um, you could either pull from the bag, which means you will exhaust whatever this resource is, you know, and right. you could end up empty. Like, it's like eventually you have, I don't know, whatever, like, just like mental exhaustion. You have no more willpower left. You have no more, you know, verve. Like, verve would be a funny thing to call it. <laughs> um or, but again, like what you said, <clears throat> and that would like replenish, like maybe like when you sleep or in between adventures or whatever, uh, that would be sort of like how you dig deep. Or um, you could, and, and we talked about this too, you're like, um, what does this cost? Where it's like, oh, I got... I. It, you know, I got this thing, but unfortunately, um, like, like, what did it cost you? It's like, oh, well, now this per this master is disappointed in me, and that's going to mm -hmm. last for a while. That's going to have a long term game effect. But actually, I, I'm sorry, I'm conflating a couple of separate things because what I was actually thinking of, because that would be hard to represent in the bag. For the bag mm -hmm. itself, you just have like everybody starts with five moxie, and you're like. You're like, oh no, I really need to dig deep 
and cross this rope bridge. Cool. I suck at athletics or whatever. It's like, I'm going to pull out some moxie and I did it. Or what you put in is like trauma, you know? Yes. And, or it's like, it's like something bad happens and maybe this is, this could be tied into like how wounds are handled or something. It's like, or, or, cause I love the thought like hit points are so ephemeral. It's like, Oh no, a dragon tore me in half. Oh, but I drank a potion. Everything's nothing. Nothing matters. Superman died, <laughs> but no, nobody cares. Like nothing is permanent. But the thought of, cause I love fate worse than death. I love, you know, narratively, by the way, uh, I love long-term consequences, you know, for whatever. And so what you could be like, oh no, this bad thing happened. It's not like I lost a hit point. What you get is like, you know, like bad knee, you know? Yeah, that is like, so th that is one of the things that I think works in the bag system really, really well is the idea of considering during a roll, like, well, you're rolling against him right now and you've got a long standing relationship with him. So there is a, sp a specific thing for that that represents that that goes into the bag. Um, and if you draw that, it is going to have a huge effect on whatever your result is um I, I i also think like you know there there would be standard like yes no chips based on difficulty but if you do things like well you know i am gonna skip sleep uh because i have to study or whatever yes you can add you can add like that uh, like that extra chip to like oh that's another potential bad result because you took a temporary thing to get a to get a right now benefit and you're going to pay for it in the future. It works the same thing with learning things. You can learn a piece of information and that can go in your bag. Um, and oh. the reason I'm so fixated on, on currency audience oh. is Kvothe is always telling us exactly how much money he has on his person at any given time. So I, I think it is neat. Like I, the more I've been thinking about the bag thing, I like the bag, um, but I'm also a huge fan of Genesis. Uh, so we we need to throw spaghetti at the yeah, wall is, yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. But like the, the bag has solved some problems for me that I'm very, very excited about. Yeah. When we hit that McElroy goal, though, I have no idea what the best choice for the McElroy goal is at this and point. Like, honestly, yeah, because I don't, I want to, they know that, you know, I, you would laugh at the email that I sent them and I'm like, hey, everybody, you interested in maybe coming in playing a game in my world you know we're developing the system we've knocked some of the rough corners off we'd love to get your like your thoughts on it just for you to try it out and then i, I sent it and i'm like that seemed a little stiff and then i sent him a follow-up and i'm like just just to be clear uh tamarant is the name of the world that king killer is in this is a king killer game I'm asking if you want to come in and fuck up my world, you know, a little bit. And, and I'm like, and then I sent that and I'm like, is that, uh, is that, is that too crass? Is that too familiar? So like, no matter what I do, I always feel like I fucked it up. Um, oh. I, I, I trust that it was familiar, but not too familiar. <laughs> oh, oh, James, James, that James, I cannot, God damn you and your strong closer. Uh, because now we are at 11 o'clock and I'm pretty sure Nate is teed up. Um, uh, thank you so much. Again, I'm so excited to do this game and I'm so excited to do both the, 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 uh, the, some of these individual fun podcasts, but also to develop the system and, and do it long term. Um, yeah, um, if, if y'all want to find me, you can find my stuff over at oneshotpodcast.com or go to your favorite uh, podcast app and search for One Shot, where we had the King Killer run or Campaign Skyjacks, which is my ongoing series. If you are a fan of Patrick Rothfuss, especially because of goals that we hit last year's fundraiser drive, uh, you should you will be interested in uh, episodes that are coming out within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so get get ready for that. We are getting very close. Uh, I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait to share all. Of this. 
I'm I'm excited too. I've been catching up on Skyjacks. That's what's been keeping me going. Um, so uh, thank you again, James, and I hope to be talking to you soon.